Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. Today is the day we are going to reclaim our garage. For the last few weeks, our garage has been completely tore apart because we've been working on adding these pine shiplap walls as well as hanging these upper cabinets. And today we are going to be moving back in, getting everything reorganized and hopefully making this a really nice place to work out here. Now, just because we've created all of this additional storage with doors on the front does not give us an excuse just to jam things in the cupboards and close the door and hide stuff. I wanna put everything back in a well thought out manner, give everything a home. That way when you do a project and you get things out, it always goes back to the same place. It's gonna make cleanup a lot easier. If you don't do that, one or two projects later, your garage is going to get back to looking like this and it's just always going to be a mess and something that you're constantly fighting with. So you guys already know who this sounds like a perfect job for. Doug! So as you saw, we got neighbor Doug racing up the driveway there and uh, so Doug, if you're tackling a project like this, where I think most people are probably like me where they've got a mess and they don't know where to start on cleaning it up. How do you attack a project like this and get started? Well, you've, you've got a good option here, or a good, good place to start. You started out with a blank slate. Some people can't do that. It makes it difficult. And yeah, you were able to shift it over. But really, when I look at things, I look at them as whether they're daily use, monthly use or yearly use. And the yearly use stuff is put in the most out of the way spot and not prime real estate. So up in the attic <clears throat> trusses or down in the basement or something like that yeah. for, the, for the yearly use items. Yeah, I mean, something that, well, I use this once a year, but I'm not going to throw it away. Well, then keep that somewhere that isn't prime real estate for daily use items. So those type of things you want in a very easy, convenient spot. A good example of that was about three weeks ago, I had a whole bunch of leftover siding from the garage project. I didn't want to throw it out because you never know when you're going to need it. And matching siding five years from now can be pretty difficult. So I had it hanging from the ceiling up here, right in where we're going to be putting all of our wood shop stuff. And Doug said, it might be five years before you use that. That is valuable real estate to hang things from the ceiling. So I ended up chucking it up in the uh, attic trusses up there and getting it out of the way. And now we've got that that we can hang other more important things that might be a more of a monthly use kind of thing. Right. All right, so let's go ahead and get started and see what we come up with here. All right, first we're gonna work on paints and stains and we're gonna use this cabinet over here for that. All right, so when I look at these little cans like you got here, if you say you're not sure when you'll ever use it again? I got them for a sample just to try different colors and stuff and didn't really care for them, but you know. All right, you... well you, you do know you can't fit 10 pounds of in a five pound bag, right? <laughs> All right, so stuff like this is one of the number one things that people overlook. It's the inability to throw something away. They look at it and they go, eh, I don't know if I'll ever use it again. I'll just throw it up here. It's just a waste of good prime storage space. All right, so here's a thought I had, Adam. Okay. When you look at this, the first thing I look at is wasted space from here up. Yeah. Wasted space from here up. These are adjustable shelves. If you brought this down yeah. to a certain height, then you could double stack cans up top if you were only going to stick with this height down here. Well, and you might even find a shelf that you want to steal a shelf and make two in here or three spots. Yeah. Literally, you paid for all of this and you're only using this much. True. So when you do that, if you brought this down, and let's just do it real quick. So if this was down to about here, can you get two cans on there now? Yep. Okay, so now you're actually paying for all the storage. So you just dumped a lot of stuff out on the floor here that you would also like to utilize that cabinet spot for, right? Yes. All right, so one thing I would recommend is you've got that. We're going to try and find room here for it. But I would walk through your shop and see if you've got any more paints or anything else that you want to store. Do you store them in the house as well? I've got some down in the basement, yeah. Would it make sense to have them all in one location? Yes, it would. 
So we ended up filling this corner cabinet with uh, all of the paint stored in one spot. We have two cabinets done. The first one here is a lot of aerosol stuff, some tractor grease, glues, uh, lubricants, spray paints, that kind of stuff. And as you can see over here on the side, we have the tools that go to support that. So we've got our caulking gun, we've got our spray foam gun, and we've got our grease gun mounted to the side. So that way the tool is with the cartridges that go with it. In the next cupboard over, we've got all of our canned paints and all of our painting accessories, cups, brushes, rollers, uh, rolling pads, uh, and all that. So two cabinets done. Let's keep going. All right, so next on the list of things to organize is some of the bigger hand tools that are not as easily organized like we did with our smaller hand tools here. This is another neighbor dug idea that we got, but the PVC pipe organization doesn't work so well with circular saws, hand planers, track saws, framing nailers, and laser levels. So we got to come up with something for those. So we're wheeling the toolbox over to this side of the shop because where we had it under the workbench over there, it was underneath a workbench. Whereas if we put it over here, it essentially doubles our workbench space. So I think what we may end up doing is moving both boxes, that Kennedy one over there, uh, over beside this one, or I may end up getting another one of these U.S. General red boxes. That way they're the same height, same dimensions, everything. So we found a good way to hang these. You've got your belt loop clip here, and those will just ride right on the upper side of the cabinet there. And this one, same thing. Right it right there. And then we'll go ahead and put our finish nails and our framing nails in this lower cabinet. Oh, you know what we can do? And then we got just enough room left to throw the table saw in here. Just like that. And that's what you call utilizing space. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, one thing that Viver sent us that is gonna be critically helpful in this shop is an extension cord reel. Oh, drop something. That's right down there where gravity takes it. And it's a 50 foot long reel, which in this 28 by 32 shop should reach just about anywhere we want it to go. And where are you thinking of putting it, Adam? Well, we were originally looking at, okay, where do we have outlets? We've got an outlet there. We've got an outlet over there by the joiner behind you. And yeah, we could wall mount it. And then Doug and in his infinite wisdom started looking at the ceiling to see if we had any outlets in the ceiling. And sure enough, we do for the garage door opener. So I think we're going to mount it to the ceiling. It shouldn't hang any lower than the garage door does the garage door opener. And so I'll just be able to reach up, grab that and pull it down anywhere I need to. And it's spring loaded. It's got a lock on it. So when you get to where you're going, it'll stop. And uh, let's go ahead and get that hooked up right now. The other nice thing about that, Adam, is that cord will not get hung up on anything when you pull it around through the shop, whereas if it's over there, it could get snagged on one of the boxes or tool stands. Or laying on the floor, yep. tripping over it, it'll just be suspended from the air. Yep. Yeah, that's going to be real nice. 
You can see in this garage, the previous owners, they were a little lacking on their outlet spacing. I mean, there's one there, one there, one there. It looks like they were doing every 15 feet or so, which isn't nearly enough for a woodworking shop. This is gonna give me the ability to have three outlets anywhere I need it within 50 feet. And that is so much easier to spool out and spool back in than the old way of doing it with an extension cord where you gotta plug this end in, reel it out, plug in your equipment, unplug it, reel it back up, and put it somewhere. This is just always at an arm's length. And it locks out for you at the exact length that you need it so you're not gonna have a trip hazard. If anybody's interested in this, I think Beaver has one of the best prices online of these. I'll leave a link in the description below. K E R. Oh, nothing. All right, guys. So there we go. We have our garage back and we didn't just shove everything into cabinets to hide it, to make it look pretty. We put everything back with a purpose. There's a few things in here that probably is not going to be their forever home. I'd like to keep this side all woodworking, but for right now, I did add all of our oil pans, oil filters, funnels, uh, all that kind of stuff in this cabinet here. Eventually I'd like to move that over to this side, but since this side isn't done, I can't really move anything in here permanently. Anything that I'm pretty sure it's going to stay where it's at, I did add labels. You can see this one, aerosols, adhesives, grease, paints, paint supplies, drop cloths and rags. So this cabinet there, all drop cloths and rags. I uh, figured that goes closely related with the paints. And then we've got our, you know, circular saws and our hand planer in this cabinet here. Um, and if I do decide to move that later on, it's easy enough just to peel that tape off and peel the label off and, and create a new label and put something else in there. You may be saying to yourself that labeling the cabinets is a bit overkill, but that accomplishes two things. The first is that it always ensures that those items go back to their respective cabinet. So it makes cleanup easier. And two, if I ever need to send Lana out here to the shop or somebody that isn't me, I can tell them very quickly where something is and they're able to find it because of the labels on there. If you guys are like me and you still wanna use your small shop for equipment storage, side-by-side -side tractor, vehicles, whatever, and be able to pull them in, it's really important to have all of your equipment on wheels. So our planer here, we can wheel it out. Our dust collection system is all on wheels and our joiner is on wheels. So that way, whenever I wanna start a project, I can wheel everything out into the middle of the shop. When I'm done, I can push it back up against the wall and still utilize this space for storage for other vehicles. One piece of equipment that doesn't lend itself well to being stored on wheels is the miter saw. So what we did was we hung our miter saw stand from the wall here. And then we actually built this uh, a year or two ago over in Doug's shop. I found the design online, but it is a miter saw mount that mimics the stand. So if you look at that right there, the mount mounts to the wall and this spacing of these rails here is exactly the same as the stand and the tubes are the same. So when you go ahead to hang it on the wall, you're actually using the manufacturer's mounting bracket to lock it to the wall. And you can see it does actually lock. 
secures it to the wall very easily and is very easy to get it on the wall, off the wall, and it stores it up out of the way and up off your shop floor. Now, an idea that I came up with was I needed a place to store my outdoor LED work lights, and I figured I might as well try to make it multi-purpose, be able to use them where I'm storing them. So when I'm not taking them down to the wood yard or something like that, if I need to use them here in the shop, I can actually just take our Viva extension cord, run it over to one light, find another extension cord and run it over to the other light. And that really just brightens up this back corner, which to be honest, did not have enough light to begin with with the spacing of what they did with our fluorescent lights in the shop. You can see that corner over there is kind of dark and that's what this looked like before. So being able to plug those lights in where I'm storing them really helps to brighten up the woodworking side of the shop. And lastly was just utilizing the space above and around the windows for our roller stands, clamps, uh, some saw horses over there. That space would have otherwise gone to waste and being able to store that kind of stuff up there where I can still reach it and get to it easily is a good use of space. So I'm not gonna sit here and pretend to be a garage organization wizard, but Neighbor Doug is. Uh, if you're not familiar with Neighbor Doug's story, he was a small business owner here in town, and I believe one of his primary responsibilities was making sure that the shop floor was running like a well-oiled machine. And in order to do that, they decided to use a system called 5S. So Doug has countless hours going to seminars, trainings, classes, touring other facilities that had already implemented 5S. And uh, I asked him, I said, how much formal training do you think you have in 5S? And he said, probably at least 100 hours. And if you're not familiar, 5S is uh, sort, set in order, shine, sustain, standardize. It's a very interesting concept uh, to be used in business as well as in your own personal shop. Now, I'm not going to be so naive to sit here and say that our shop is in accordance with 5S because I know it's not. Some of it is, you know, we've got labels in certain places, we've got homes for certain things. Um, but Neighbor Doug's shop, if you, don't, if you are not familiar, uh, you ought to go check out his YouTube channel, One Eye Customs. I would say 90 to 95% of his shop is in accordance with 5S. And if you've never heard of 5S before, I highly recommend you do a little bit of research on the internet. Go to Google, type in 5S. Go to YouTube, type in 5S. It's really interesting stuff. And in my opinion, it's the only real way to keep your shop clean, at least for me. I know the little bit of it that we've done up to this point has made the shop so much more enjoyable to use and clean up. There's a huge difference between cleaning your shop and organizing your shop. And I know this firsthand because I used to be guilty of just cleaning my shop. My main goal was to get the floors cleared and the countertops cleared, which meant ramming everything that I could into cabinets and just hiding stuff to get it off of the surfaces. Organizing your shop is completely different because you're actually taking the time to give everything a home. When you pull something out, when you go to put it back, it goes back to the same spot. And you're never again looking for that missing tool and having to go to Home Depot and buying a second one. Anyway, I think that's gonna about wrap this one up. I hope this video was helpful for you guys and giving you some ideas for your own shops. If you're interested in one of those retractable reel extension cords from Viva, I will leave a link in the description below. If you guys enjoyed this one, give me a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.